Well, hello there. Today, I am on the east coast of the southern island of New Zealand. I'm near a town called Kaikoura. It is famous for its seal colony. In fact, you might be able to see a seal right behind me with his big old flipper hanging out of the water. Anyhow, this place is known for its abundant sea life. There was a ton of dolphins around this morning swimming all around, and it's an excellent place to get Pawa. Now, Pawa is also known other places in the world as abalone. It is a very sought after delicacy. It can fetch up to, I think, $80 a pound or something like that. Very valuable. What you see behind me here, this rocky area, is filled with Pawa. Now, Pawa is a mollusk. It's technically a kind of sea snail. It's known as a univalve, which means it just has shell on one side. The other side is clamping it right onto the rock. So this is what I'm going for. This is a full-grown pow shell here, and you can see the size of it. It's, it's hand size. The legal size here is 125 millimeters. So if it's any smaller, leave it alone. It takes about three to five years for them to become full size. Good eating, bad eating. So I'm just gonna wait for the tide to pull back a little bit. You don't have to wait until low tide necessarily, but it does make it easier to swim down as the water is more shallow, of course. So I'm just gonna hang out here, watch some seals, and oh my God, these things stink so bad. You can smell them before you see them. But anyway, they are pretty fun to look at. So what do you need gear-wise? Well, if you're a total boss, you could probably just go old school, swim down with a sharp stick, but I'm not that hardcore. So I have some cheapo flippers that I bought, uh, mask and snorkel, of course, a, a flat diving knife here, and I'm just using the bag from the flippers to put them in. And of course, you're gonna want a wetsuit because it is the South Island of New Zealand. It's not the warmest water in the world. Okay, low tide is here, this is great. Only problem is that there is a lot more swell in the water than there was before. The waves have picked up, I'm probably gonna get moved around. This is not gonna make things easy. But anyway, I'm gonna get wet and see how it goes. Now, quick disclaimer, this is total amateur hour here. Please take my advice with a grain of salt However, I have gone out looking on my own a couple of times. I've asked some locals for their knowledge, and hey, it's all about just trying it and learning as you go. So even in my short power diving career, I have learned a couple of things. So I'm looking for the power to hang out in groups. They're normally found together, not all the time. Sometimes you find a lone ranger, but they're gonna look like a clump of rocks almost. They get this sort of pink algae on them a lot of the time, so you can tell you'll find these round, pinkish looking sort of stones, and that's the actual power. Sometimes you'll find them hiding right within the seaweed, and you almost have to brush the seaweed back. Other times you can find them out in the open. Now, when you actually find one, the best thing to do is sort of sneak attack, slide the knife under really quickly, and pry it off before they notice you're there because they are incredibly strong at clamping onto the rock. And if you're getting moved around in the waves like I am today, you can lose your spot very easily. The seaweed makes it kind of confusing and you'll get swept around and then all of a sudden you have no idea where that nice juicy one went. Now the power they're easy enough to determine just from the shape and the way that you find them generally, but they do have a line of holes that they use for breathing and apparently reproduction. Not sure how that works, but that is the telltale obvious sign that you have the right shellfish in front of you. Okay, so I'm finally dry. I succeeded. I got my quota of six power, nice sized, well over the limit. And it's actually thanks to Gary. 
Gary is my neighbor here. He saw me kind of floundering around in the water. I'd managed to get one that was just of size and he was able to point me to the right area, let me use his catchment bag, and he gave me this sweet knife, plastic knife, so you don't hurt the power or cut it because once they start bleeding, they die. So if you get one that's the wrong size, you can at least put them back and they will live. And now we are going to do our best to prep and cook these up before we get completely blacked out by the darkness of night. So this is Gary, my neighbor, who showed me where to actually go and get these things because I was in the wrong location. First thing what we do, we have a beer. Here's a <laughs> yeah. bloody beer. So tell me, what do we do here? All right, just place the edge of the knife down on there. Push down. Twist. Okay. So we got some pretty good size ones today. They're real, real beauties. And what's this part that we slice off? That there, that is the foot. So what we do, we cut that off. That's the guts. Okay. There was you go. <laughs> 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 that tastes of shit. So what you do is you slice that off. You can keep this and put it in your cray in your cray pots. Okay. But I don't. Birds will eat it. I'll give it now that part there, that is the mouth. Really? <laughs> yeah. <Weird. Ooh. laughs> so what you do, you cut the mouth out. So give that to the birds. And then all you do now, you just wash that. Yep. Hit it with a hammer. And then if you want to cook it up, then you slice it. And you probably cook it for about 30 seconds. That's it? That's it. Really? Yep. If okay. you cook it too long, they go hard and they go tough. So you can have a go. Alright. Let me put down the beer. If you haven't got a knife, put a starfish yeah. on your hand. Because they don't like starfish. Oh really? You put it like that and go up like that and you'll see them. They, they take off they real fast. Tell? That's crazy. Yeah. Put it on the table. Yep. Push down. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just pops right out. Yep. There we go. Okay. And then you can use these for ashtrays. <laughs> okay. Find, I find it easier to do that. Sit them up. Okay. Just be real careful. And you can feel them getting kind of hard already. Yep. As soon as they die, they're like, yep, yep, they don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that came out nice and quite easy, huh? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So then just give them a rinse, basically? Yep. <laughs> okay, mate. Tenderized. <laughs> Seems like you're being kind of gentle. Yeah, no, you don't have to. You don't have to hit the buggers too hard. But it is amazing. They're they're really tightened up as soon as you pull it out of the shell. Yeah. Really? Like really? Oh yeah, because it was like hard as a rock before. Yeah. yeah. Keep it a bit of oil, bit of, bit of garlic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get get that really cooking. Bit of coconut oil, because that's all I have. Garlic sizzling power. Chuck it in there, mate. You don't you don't really want to cook it. What you want to do is just heat it through. Mm. You don't really want to cook it because it'll go all rubbery. It would taste like a bloody old leather belt. A lot, a lot of protein in it. So, you can turn that bugger off now. Oh yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, beauty. Yeah. Is it tender? Yeah. 
if your body is starting to feel a bit tired yeah. and all that, eat a bit of power. Woof. Yeah. It's got a lot of energy in it. Enough to get your energy to go swim yep. for some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say that worked out pretty damn well, given the very little planning put into this. I got totally lucky. Uh, it was so awesome to have someone to help out with their local knowledge and just being an open and friendly person and willing to hang out and give me a hand. And I really did feel like I got to connect with a little bit of that old school hunter-gatherer vibe that I think, you know, it really is part of the human DNA and recently being really disconnected with that kind of thing. So it felt great to put in the work, learn some things, have a great meal, and I am definitely stoked on getting on to the next mission. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and definitely more to come.